Welcome to this first video about vector databases. Over the course of a number of videos, I'm going to be working through a, ver a number of different scenarios relating to vector databases. What are they? What can they be used for? Looking at vector embeddings, what is a vector and what we can do with it? How can we use these vectors to search our data? Um, looking at vector indexes, some of the issues around sizing and space challenges that we face with using vector indexes. You know, not a lot is actually mentioned about this, but it's a really important consideration. And then we'll look at, you know, some other examples to do with loading um, a new embedding model uh, into a database. We may look at loading documents, being able to apply the vector embedding on those, and lots of other examples. And along the way, through all of these different videos, there will be a number of different uh, demonstrations of using uh, vector search within an Oracle database. Now, we're using an Oracle database because, well, we can, right? It's, it's a multi-model database. You know, we can have lots of different types of data. We can have lots of different types of uh, structures of data, and we can query lots of different types of data uh, all in one query. So this is something really useful. It's not a single purpose database. It's multi-purpose database. So let's get into it. Right. So when we start looking at vector databases, is that they're a little bit different to our traditional multi-model, multimodal databases, which are really efficient at searching and retrieving structured data. So if I want to find, you know, bring me back all the records that have the name Brendan, you know, it's really good at doing that kind of matching, right? That kind of structured matching. But what we've seen is over the last particularly 10 years or more is that the ability to process unstructured data within databases has become has become a lot more possible right? because you know as we develop a lot of these like if you want to call it legacy no sql type databases because they were designed to solve a particular purpose and once you've so the, the, the solved that particular purpose you know that's kind of useful but they're they have limited use outside of that particular purpose, where if you take most enterprise multimodal databases, they include a lot of those NoSQL capabilities in it. So the ability to search both structured and non-structured data within the one query is becoming more and more important. You know, as our applications grow and the type of applications that we develop become a lot more complex and we can do a lot more with it, we can also uh, look at how can we actually speed up our access to all of this data. And vector search is one way of doing it. And you know, this basically comes out of all of those different vector databases that we've seen again over the last few years of being able to look at you know, that unstructured data, which could be like product reviews or newspapers or documents. Um, but we can also have things to do with uh, uh, audio or video or images or you know we can have lots of different ways of doing it and we have seen through like using neural networks and um, how we can actually you know map those data into a vector which is effectively a string or an array of numbers that describes that particular data and each of those numbers can represent like a dimension so we're well used to looking at two-dimensional or three-dimensional space what happens if we can go to 1,000 or 3,000 dimensional space? The ability then to map data from all of these kind of more unstructured or semi-structured type objects into n-dimensional space, we can then start identifying semantic relationships or things that are really similar to one another and things that are less similar to one another. And these allow us to be able to do that searching on that kind of unstructured and semi-structured data a lot more efficiently. Now, when we start looking at, you know, kind of databases in general, is that, you know, they're really good at storing, processing, and querying data. You know, and, you know, when we look at that, is that, you know, data storage, you know, they're really good at managing that. They've been doing it for like 50 years, all right? And over those 50 years, they've been building in the ability to store more and more different data types. and and ways of kind of accessing that through different indexing of it and then also through different ways of querying that data and being able to process that data and to a certain extent you know again as i said earlier 
over the last kind of 10, 15 years, or particularly 10 years, the ability to search and process unstructured data along with structured data is really important. And we will, if we can do it all in one particular place, that's really good. So this is what we've seen is, you know, particularly, you know, from about mid uh, 2023 onwards and particularly during 2024 we've seen a lot of those kind of mainstream if you want to call it uh, uh, monolith databases which you know, people throw out to be able to describe you know, to try and say they're old but you know, they're not old they, they keep on evolving they're they're not what things were from 20 years ago 30 years ago they're a very different kind of you know uh, data processing engines and um, and are full of capabilities within all of that. So when we start looking at, at all of this, is that, you know, with vector databases, it's a specialized type of database that is designed to store and index vector embeddings. So that's your vector, like that's your number sequence, uh, for efficient retrie retrieval and similarity search. Because we're not necessarily looking for exact match. We're not looking for, you know, bring me back all the records that have Brendan. You know, maybe we want to bring back all the records that have names that are similar to Brendan. You know, if you take off the type of processing that's needed for that, it can be quite complex. But with using these vector embedding models within vector databases, you know, all of those NIF names, whether they're male, female, or whatever type versions of, of Brendan, all kind of sit within a very similar kind of search space. So we'd be able to retrieve those a, a lot kind of quicker. Now, when we delve into this, and we'll have kind of a series of videos that kind of go through different aspects of this, you know, vector embeddings, they're, they're really a mathematical or mathematical representation of the data that we capture. And that stores the semantic information. So those connections or those relationships between uh, different words or different phrases or different kind of concepts or whatever else, and those that mathematical representation, through that we can search it and get our similarity search. So what we have here is an example of, you know, we can take a JPEG file and we can create a numeric representation out of it. And that's known as our vector embedding or our vector that we want to be able to do. So when we search, for on these vectors is that, well, what are we searching? You know, we're going to have a term, we're going to have a concept, we're going to maybe have another document, you know, find me other documents that are similar to this, is that we need to pass that through the embedding model. It'll produce a vector. You know, it could get, you know, um, stored in, in, the, in the vector database or in our multi-model database. But within that, there's a, a vector search capability, which does similarity matching um, and again, we will we'll delve into some of the details of that in, in another video. So there's lots of complex processing in here. And maybe the response times aren't exactly what we're maybe used to when we do exact matching. But you know, there's lots of ways of we can get closer to having almost real-time comparisons and all of this. And when we look across all of this is that, you know, there's lots and lots of different ways of doing it. You know, it isn't just on text data that we can do it on. Yes, we can do it on text. We can do it on image. We can do it on audio, video, you know, which is pretty much the same as image. But, you know, there's lots and lots of other types of way of being able to look at it. Now, when you start Googling some of this is that there's lots and lots of different kind of databases, vector databases out there in some form or other. All right, you know, being able to process a lot of this data. And to a certain extent, you know, they're good and they're really good at what they do, but some of them can be, you know, single purpose kind of scenarios. And because of, you know, enterprises now is we want to be able to search through, say, uh, support call logs or documentation or customer reviews or all of those kind of different scenarios, we want to be able to capture that. So this is where we, we get to see is that an awful lot of the kind of more traditional type databases have been incorporating this capability, uh, particularly during 2024. And we'll, we'll see a few more kind of coming out. So think of those kind of long term boring, you know, what some people call legacy. They're not legacy. They're modern databases um, that are capable of, of a lot in what we're doing. And when we examine some of this is that, you know, what we can see is there's lots and lots of different use cases. 
right? And within these different use cases is we're trying to find things that are related in some sort of way. So things from searching images, finding similar documents, doing product recommendations, detecting fraud, classifying documents, translations, um, searching for you know, songs that uh, are similar in, you know, in melody and rhythm or whatever uh, across all that. You know, just a wide variety of different possibilities. But, you know, we, we are actually end users of this kind of technology for quite some time. So if you do Google search, Bing search, eBay, Amazon, you know, any of those things where you kind of search for different kind of kind of tech through text descriptions, they're using this kind of technology to be able to help us to be able to do it. All right. Now, traditional databases, you know, store data like words, numbers in a table format, right? Uh, and vector databases, you know, the idea is to work with complex data. But to a certain extent, you know, if it's text, you know, we can easily store that in a database. If it's um, a video or an image file or an audio file, we can easily store that in a database. But being able to search through them becomes a little bit more difficult. So it's different than, you know, searching for the word Brendan. You know, can we find all the images of cats and dogs and whatever else? But, you know, maybe we want to get into something a bit more sophisticated than that about, you know, do we want to look at certain colors or certain features or certain characteristics? So this allows us to do a lot more refined searching on what we want to be able to do. All right. So sometimes you'll see in some websites the idea of customers who bought this product also bought these products. You know, this is a way of finding some of that kind of similarity kind of search within that. So we're moving from the idea of, you know, taking, you know, different solutions and different databases to deal with different types of um, data into we can now deal with all of those within our different databases. 